In this episode, we are simply adding our narrative to the most succinct and yet ideally complete overview of what biochar is that we've seen. This overview was expounded by Warm Heart Worldwide. But what is biochar? Biochar is a black carbon-rich material produced by thermally treating biomass materials such as rice husks, maize straw, groundnut shells, sawdust, etc. in zero or limited oxygen conditions using a process called pyrolysis. All the cellulose, lignin and other non-carbon materials gasify and are burnt away. What remains is pure carbon, about 40% of the carbon originally contained in the biomass. Pyrolysis can be achieved at various levels, ranging from domestic to industrial. At the domestic level, the process can be miniaturized into pyrolytic cooking stoves that utilize agricultural waste rather than firewood, thereby reducing deforestation while converting the waste into energy and biochar. At the small farm level, there are really excellent low-cost methods such as those developed and demonstrated by Warm Heart Worldwide. The first is simply a hole in the ground. The second is a biochar oven. And the third is a trough that utilizes flame cap pyrolysis. In addition to these, an Adam retort kiln can be quite handy for larger field operations. This kiln is sophisticated enough to allow measurement of the pyrolysis gases. Beyond this, industrial kilns are utilized. If you look at biochar under an electronic microscope, you see an extraordinary moonscape of holes upon holes. What does this mean? Biochar is an amazing sponge that will hold or absorb huge amounts of water. All those little holes also provide very convenient homes for soil microbes. Why is biochar so valuable? It simply seems to have no end of uses that derive from a handful of key characteristics. First, when used as a soil amendment, it augments agronomic yield by A unlocking even poor soil's nutrients. Here's how it happens. Plants like soil that has a neutral pH of say 6.5 to 7, whereas most soils in the developing world are acidic to very acidic with a pH of 4 to 5.5. In soils this acidic, most plants cannot take up nutrients even if those nutrients are present in the soil. Sticking some biochar in such soils can however push the pH as much as a whole point higher. As the pH rises, more and more nutrients become available to the crops. B. Plants can't eat their elements raw. No matter how much they need nitrogen, for instance, they can't just suck it up. They need microbes to digest it first and turn it into nitrates and nitrites. Biochar encourages communities of these soil microbes to reside in its structure. And C, due to its electrically charged surface, biochar is attractive to chemicals of all types. Only months after a bit of pure biochar has been stuck in the soil, it is covered with scales of calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. It's become a little mineral ball, so to say. When fertilizer is sprinkled on this soil, instead of seeing 50% of it leach away with rain, that fertilizer too will glom onto the biochar providing long-lasting, slow-release nutrition. If the field is contaminated with heavy metals, soon the calcium 
lead, or mercury are all chemically bound or adsorbed to the biochar, where plants can no longer take them up and water can no longer wash them away. To summarize, these properties of biochar result in healthier soils, lower acidity, better water retention, they promote seed germination, stronger plants, richer soil life, less contamination, and higher fertility. The results can be really so visibly astounding as can be observed from this image which shows three rows of maize or corn planted at the same time during biochar trials in Zambia. The rows were planted at exactly the same time. Biochar was applied to rows on the left and right, but not to the middle row. This in turn results in significant crop yields per unit area, which reduces the need for agricultural land expansion, thereby reducing deforestation. With the correct calibration, therefore, biochar application could offer considerable benefits in terms of improving food security and reducing reliance on chemical fertilizers, which could have considerable environmental and economic advantage. Second, the process of making biochar results in CO2 being literally scrubbed from the atmosphere, a process now called pyrogenic carbon capture and storage. Here's how it works. Biomass extracts CO2 from the atmosphere through photosynthesis. Keep in mind that the molecular weight of carbon is 12, whereas that of carbon dioxide is 44, which therefore means that the weight of CO2 is 3.6 times heavier than the weight of carbon. This in turn means making biochar removes 3.6 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere for every ton of biochar produced. When added to fields as a soil amendment, that carbon is permanently sequestered. This is called pyrogenic carbon capture and storage. A recent expert assessment estimates that biochar could sequester hundreds of gigatons of CO2 by the end of this century. It is now recognized that the current efforts to mitigate climate change will not by themselves achieve the desired result of keeping the rise in the median temperature of the planet below 1.5 degrees Celsius and that carbon capture and storage has become imperative. This becomes obvious when one looks at this image. Scientists have calculated that even with all the current plagues met, the increase in the median temperature of the planet will be in the red zone between 2.5 and 2.8 degrees Celsius. We want this increase to be in the green zone below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Carbon capture and storage is therefore increasingly becoming the only option left to achieve the target of keeping the increase in the median temperature of the planet below 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2100. And pyrogenic carbon capture and storage is the environmentally sustainable way to achieve this. Plus, around the world, particularly in developing countries, field burning creates 330,000 gigatons of black carbon annually, the second biggest contributor to global warming. Therefore, using biomass waste for biochar instead of field burning could have a great impact in mitigating climate change. Third, pyrolysis is a suitable way to produce energy from waste at both domestic and industrial levels. At the domestic level, as shown earlier, this is achieved using biochar stoves. The World Health Organization reports that indoor cooking smoke is responsible for more than half the deaths among children less than five years old from respiratory infections, with a total of 11,000 people dying daily 
from cooking smoking fumes, resulting in about 4 million deaths annually of the 3 billion people who use firewood for cooking. It's a problem that certainly deserves much attention. Smokeless pyrolytic stoves offer a solution. Another environmental advantage of pyrolytic stoves is that they are fired with agricultural waste instead of firewood. With the establishment of the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves, these stoves have gained much recognition. Substantial amounts of energy in the form of biofuel and syn gas can be produced using industrial pyrolysis as shown. Fourth, due to its electrically charged surface, biochar chemically binds or absorbs cadmium, lead, mercury, and other contaminants. This has tremendous implications for the use of biochar for low-cost water purification. The bottom line, look for ways to enrich your life with biochar and help build a market to encourage widespread manufacturing of this simple yet amazing natural product. It could help save the world. Here is an awesome image that says it all. If you have not yet subscribed to Environ Campus, please go ahead and do so now. Also, if you like this particular video, please give us a thumbs up.